One of the things that we have to stay on top of constantly in IT is security. Now this is of course true in the cloud as well. And in Azure, our basic layer of security revolves around our virtual network. Each network in Azure creates a isolation, but over time it has grown more and more complex in the cloud, so we've had to add more and more services to accommodate for it. And as the world extends from IaaS into PaaS services, we need to be able to link the two together in a way that's going to give us that layer of security that we need and we don't have issues like data exfiltration. So we're going to talk about network security for a little bit here as we zone in on Azure Private Link. I'm Dean Safola and this is the Azure Academy. So there's a lot of services that we need to cover so you can understand how Private Link fits into the ecosystem of Azure. So let's jump into our docs and get started. So in our docs page, we'll go to products and then go down the table of contents to networking. And then at the bottom here, we see private link. And in the table of contents here, we'll click this link for what is private link. So this diagram is going to help us out here. We have platform as a service items in Azure. This is things like Azure database or Cosmos database, Key Vault, Azure storage, etc. And all of these services all have internet facing endpoints. So when you want to talk to Azure storage, you're actually communicating with the internet endpoint of that storage. After some feedback from customers, we found that everyone wanted a secure way to get there from Azure directly without having to go down and around out through the internet. So we came up with a technology that's called service endpoints. And that is something that you set up on your virtual network for every subnet that you want to have doing this. And you can have the service basically hairpin the traffic through Azure's secure network address translation to go to the service. It still hits the public facing endpoint, but it does so from Azure directly on our backbone. Private Link is different. It actually takes that service and projects a virtual network card inside Azure and you get a actual IP address. And that in this case is 10.1.1.5 and that represents this Azure service. So when I wanna hit this Azure service now, I can't go to the public internet endpoint. The only way to get there is from this internal network IP address. Now that works out just fine in normal Azure routing because my spokes know how to route to it. My on-prem knows how to route to it. All I have to do is hit this private IP address and I get to that service. So let's take a look at this inside the Azure portal. So in the portal at the top here, we're gonna search for the word private and then we're gonna click on private link. So this is the private link center. And then down at the bottom here, we've got three different options to help us get started. This first one would be to connect to existing resources with a private link, build new resources with a private link, or expose resources so that others can get to them. Now, when we do this, they must be behind a standard Azure load balancer. We'll get into all three of these scenarios. And over on the left side, we've got our pending connections. This will become more important in a few minutes. Our private endpoints themselves, the private link service, and then the different resources that can be enabled at the moment. And more of these will be coming over time. So let's start building. So our first start button here is to build a private connection to resources that already exist. So let's start there. In my subscription, I'll select my resource group where I've got my stuff and then we'll give it a name and I'll call it private key vault 01. We'll go to the resources and then we'll select our resource type of a key vault and then we'll select our key vault that is in the private link resource group, which is called private vault 001. This sub resource is the specific kind of resource that this private endpoint will be able to access. In this case, a vault. And then we'll hit next for our configuration. And we have to now attach it to a subnet in a virtual network. So I'll use my DMZ subnet for this. And now we have a additional option where we can integrate this with Azure Private DNS. So if you choose not to, you just toggle 
toggle this to no, but I'll leave this on yes, and it's going to spin up a new zone for us called private link .vault -core .azure .net. We'll hit next and add the appropriate tags, and we've added one for our cost center, so we know who's paying for this. Our application here is private link. We're in a lab environment, and we're doing this for the IT department, and we'll hit next, and we have the ability to review what it is that we're going to create, and we can also check our ARM template to see what that all looks like. And we have three resources that'll be provisioned here, and you can save that template for later use, and we'll hit create. So back in the private link center, let's see what we've got. So we've got a new private endpoint here for our key vault. And if you click on that, it takes you to the private link directly. And then under our particular kind of resource, we go to key vault and we can see our vault here and which we can click on and get into the vault itself. So back in the overview screen, let's go to the second start button here. And this will allow us to provision resources with the private link enabled. So let's provision an Azure SQL database and we'll put it in a resource group of private link and we'll give it a name and we'll call it private SQL DB 01 and I'm creating a new SQL server for this and I've set the compute to be serverless. So we'll hit next. And now we have our network access and our options here are no network access, turn on our public endpoint or use our private link endpoint. We'll add the private endpoint here, and I'll just call this private access zero. And for our sub resource type, we only have the choice of a SQL server. And we'll put this on our DMZ as well. And we'll create a new DNS zone for this as well. And it'll be private link.database.windows.net. We'll hit OK. And then we'll hit next. And we'll just leave our additional settings as default and go to our tags. And our cost center is here, so we know who's paying for this. It's a private link application in the lab, and this time our business unit is for the accounting department. And we'll hit next. And then of course we can review our ARM template as well. You can save that one for yourself, and we'll hit create. Our SQL Server has finished building, and we have the same types of resources added now. We've got our network card that has our IP address, our private DNS zone, a private endpoint, and of course our SQL Server and SQL database. So let's go back to the private link center. And under our private endpoints, we can see we've got our SQL, our key vault, and in the background, I added one for our storage account around Azure files. And they're all located in that DMZ subnet. And then of course, we can look at each one of them here individually, just like we did the key vault. So that's going through and provisioning private link on top of resources that already exist or creating new resources with private link enabled. And that brings us to the third, and that is to expose services of our own that private link can use. And this does need to be behind a standard load balancer. And this is where we're going to get into the private link service and pending connections. So let's see how this goes. So we need to provision a resource again in our resource group. And we'll put that in the East US and we'll hit next for our outbound settings. And here's where we select our load balancer and then our load balancer front end IP as well as the NAT information. And we mouse over the tooltip here. So the subnet where the NAT IP will be allocated to your service. So we want this in the DMZ. And in this next section for the private IP allocation, we have the option of setting static numbers of IPs or we can let this be dynamic in allocation. It depends on what kind of service you're hosting here as to which path you would choose. I'm doing a website, so I don't know what the number of connections is going to be, so I'll leave it at dynamic. And we'll hit next for our security. And now we have to decide how our consumers will be getting access to this. So we can do this by RBAC or by anyone using my alias, or I'll be choosing this one because it gives me the option to control things at a subscription level, as you'll see in a second. So we need to add our subscriptions that we want to give access to here. And if you have multiple, separate them by a comma. So I've added three subscriptions here and we'll hit OK. And even though I entered all subscription IDs because my login is directly tied to these two subscriptions, it resolves their names. Now I'm going to set this subscription where I'm hosting the service to auto approve, but these other two I'm going to not auto approve. So we can see what both experiences look like and we'll hit next. And then we need to add our tags. And the unique one here is we've created a new business unit for the sales team and we'll just hit next. 
and you can review everything on the list and also look at our ARM template, which we'll do because this is something different. So the resource that we're provisioning here is the private link service, and that will then add explicit visibility to my private link endpoint to these particular subscriptions with this one in particular being set to auto approve. And then it gives us our load balancer config that we entered and then updates our Azure subnet here to build our new private link just like we did in the other ones. So we'll hit create. So back in the private link center, we've got our private link service now set up here. And if we click on that, the different items that are here, so we've got our private endpoint connections, we don't have any just yet, what our current NAT configuration is, and what our access policies are if we need to change those. Now we also have up here the alias, and this is important. This is basically the token that we give to somebody, which is going to give them access to our service. So now that we've set up all these things, let's get to see them in action. So we start off with our private link service, and I've got a VM that's up and running. So I'm in that third subscription that we added and I've got my virtual machine here in another resource group also called private link and I've built myself a virtual network where my resources are set up. And you can see our address space here is 100.0.0.0. We've got our VM here with a .68 IP address. And if we look at the private link center and we go under our pending connections, we don't have anything, private endpoints, private service link, nothing in this environment is set up at present. So I'm logged in here through Azure Bastion and my VM that's hosting the web server is 12.0.0.68. When I open my web browser to that address, you can see that here is my website. So I'm on 12.0.0.68. So let me see if I can reach that from my other VM's environment. So I'll open my web browser and go to 12.0.0.68 and you can see this does not work. Now, I know you might be thinking, well, it's because the VNets aren't paired together, so you can't get there. Well, this is exactly the point because this particular VM where I'm hosting the web server does not have a public internet point at all. So it's a private service not hosted off the public internet, hosted behind private link in Azure. So I can't get there. But if I use the private link service, I can. Back in the private link center where I have my private service set up, I'll copy my my alias and I'll give it to my customer who I want to have access my services and I'll go to create a new private endpoint and I'll put that in my private link resource group and give it a name and I'll call it service I want to use and hit next for the resource and here is where I select a resource ID or alias and I can paste in the alias that I got from my vendor and then I can write a message here and then we can hit next and then we have to give this a place on our network and we'll do that in our DMZ and then we'll hit next and add the appropriate tags and to keep it simple we'll just add a customer money cost center tag and hit next and then we'll hit create. Back in our customers private link center we go under private endpoints and here is our target endpoint and if we click on that this is an actual private endpoint in our subscription that is currently awaiting approval. So let's go back to our private link center in our primary subscription and approve it. And if we go under our pending connections, here it is and it is awaiting approval. So if we click on this and we can hit approve here, which will then allow the service to have access. And now that that's been approved, it disappears here from our pending connections, but we can find it under the private link service. And there is our private link endpoint connection. And we see here that our status is currently approved. This service is ready to use. If we do want to get rid of this, we can click on the checkbox here and hit reject or remove, depending on what state we want that in. And let's look at the customer experience. And on the customer side, we see that our state is now approved as well. So now in order to connect to this, we have to discover what our IP address is for our private link. And that shows here as 100.0.0.4. So we're logged on to our Windows VM again, and this is the VM in our consumer environment. And you can see that from our IP address here of 100.0.0.68. And the name of our VM is consumer VM1. We wanna connect now to our private link service, so we can't 
use this IP because that's inaccessible to us. We can use the IP of our private endpoint in our consumer environment. And that was 100.0.0.4. So let's change our IP here and I'll make this full screen and let's run that. And there we go. We are now looking at private VM one Azure rocks. So that's the private link service. But now let's take a look at the other two scenarios. So one of the services that we spun up earlier was our SQL server. And we want to take a look at what this guy is doing and we'll go to our SQL database and in the database, we'll go to our connection strings. So we want to just do a test here. So we'll do it quickly over ODBC and I've already downloaded the driver. And this is my ODBC connector on my local system. And I've already made an entry here, named it private SQL and the description is private link. And we're going to connect to our Azure SQL database. We click next. And then I have to provide my credentials for SQL auth and then we'll click next. And so I'll check the box here to find the default database. And when we do, we get a connection failed error because we can't communicate with this. Now I do know the name of the database from online. So I'll I'll just put that in here anyway. So we'll hit next. We can leave strong encryption enabled and just hit finish and then test our data and our connection fails again. So we cannot connect to our Azure SQL from here, but from our Bastion host through our private link and we'll run the same ODBC connection from here and going to the same server and I'll put in the creds and we'll hit next. And there is our database that I've already put in. If I hit the drop down arrow here, it doesn't complain. We can see the master and the primary database. And so I'll finish and test my data source. And the test is completed successfully. So we can get to it over our private link. So in our private link center, we had a Azure storage account that was set up. I'll open that and I'll go to the file share. And I've got a private share here where I've got a couple files and we'll go to click the connect string. I'll copy this data and I'll open us up in PowerShell. So here's my Windows File Explorer on my local computer and I do not have a map network drive set up. We're gonna map this to the Z drive here. So if I try to go to the Z drive, it says that it's not a valid name. And then I can run these commands and it still does not work. But I can go back to my Bastion host. And again, just to show you that we do not have a map drive on this machine. And I'll check it again through here. And nope, that drive does not exist. But I can run this command. And now the drive is mapped. And I can get to my files. So I hope that you've enjoyed looking at this video on Azure Private Link, how we could make our Azure services seem like private endpoints within our environment to make them more secure. And we can also provide those services to our customers and other consumers as a way to increase your network security and also be able to leverage those PaaS services. So if you thought that this video was good, please do click on the thumbs up and click on the subscribe button while you're down there and join us here at the Azure Academy community. And that does a few things. It basically lets the YouTube algorithm know that you're interested in our content and that you like it and it should be shared with others. It also helps us out and it lets us know that you appreciate what it is we're doing here as we just try to help you all learn more about Azure. And if you have some comments about this video or a suggestion for a new topic, please give me some comments down below on that. And this video was requested by several members in our community. So thanks very much for your feedback and please let us know what else you'd like us to create for you. And we'll be happy to do that. Thanks very much for joining us and we'll see you in the next video. Happy learning.